Do you remember Compaq, the company that went defunct in 2002 when it was acquired by HP for $25 billion? Well, I don't really, aside from one of their keyboards, the SK2800C. It doesn't really roll off the tongue as well as other keyboard names, such as the Huntsman Elite or the K55, but this keyboard actually released over a decade before both of those. Yes, it's that old. In fact, the SK2800C debuted back in 2000 and was a decent keyboard that many people actually purchased, whether separately or bundled in together with an OEM setup. Speaking of setup, setting up this keyboard was actually more difficult than I anticipated. In 2020, modern keyboards are more of a plug-and-play type situation, but back then, hardware required specific drivers for the peripherals to work properly. I'll get into that a bit later, but for now I think I'll get this worn keyboard cleaned up a bit. An issue that I immediately ran into with the SK2800C lies in its connection it used, the PS2 port. The only computers I own that have this port is my main 9700K Windows 10 computer and my old Pentium 4 631 box computer. At first I wanted to try it out on the newer system and modern games, but upon plugging to end, the keyboard was unresponsive and wouldn't work. So, instead of looking for an easy fix online, my first thought was to install Windows XP on the Pentium 4 system because, clearly, this keyboard was much too outdated to function with Windows 10. Due to classes and external delays, I finally got Windows XP installed a few days later, but a few minutes after it finalized, I decided, just for the heck of it, to see if I can get it working with my main Windows 10 computer. Turns out that all I had to do was change a 3 to a 1 in the Windows 10 registry editor. Yeah, I have a bit of a tendency to take the long way around, but at least I got a working on both systems. Regardless, I'm sure that you noticed a few things about this keyboard, such as its uncommon warning label, or its Windows 98 style operating system logo, but the part that impresses me the most is its variety of unique buttons. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to locate a manual for it, so finding out what each of the keys did was a matter of randomly pressing them and seeing what happened in various programs on both Windows XP and Windows 10, the latter which I'll cover first. On the top right is a pause slash play button, a go back 10 seconds button, a go forward 30 seconds button, a stop button, and the last one did nothing. The the buttons in the top middle of the keyboard didn't really do anything, aside from the magnifying glass button which would open the calculator, and the shopping cart button which would change your current browser tab into an empty one for some reason. On the top right side were a few more buttons as well. Here, the printer button didn't print anything, and the rocket ship button did nothing, but the volume and control buttons worked just fine. The final unique key, in the shape of a moon, put the computer to sleep upon pressing it, but for some reason also changed the colors of my Razer Huntsman Elite keyboard when it was also coincidentally plugged in. I did like its soft green glow though, and I felt that it nicely accented the rest of the board. But I said that I tested these buttons in Windows XP as well, however, their functionality across operating systems was about the same, even with the correct drivers installed. They aren't totally useless though, and I'm sure that with a macro configuration program, one can find many uses for the keys, and they would actually have a purpose. For example, one can bind the mail key to run an auto clicker, similar to what I did with the scroll lock key on my personal keyboard. Another thing to note is that the SK2800C wasn't a mechanical keyboard, but rather utilized rubber dome switches, which to my surprise didn't actually feel that bad. But then again, I had my expectations pretty low. You know what else is pretty low? The cost of this keyboard. I couldn't find any definitive information on the initial pricing for it, but nowadays it'll go for as low as $20 with shipping on used seller websites such as eBay. I don't know who'd actually want to buy this keyboard, but I guess it would be fitting for an older retro PC setup. If that isn't the goal though, one could definitely find a better product at the same price point such as the GK806. I've never heard of it before, but the price is low and the reviews are good, so they must be doing something right. I'm not sponsored, unfortunately. Also, if you made it this far into the video, there's a good chance that you actually like the content, so consider subscribing, liking, or commenting because even small interactions with viewers will help this video in the YouTube algorithm. Thanks. Now back to the keyboard. Fortunately, the SK2800C also came with a few features that made its usage a little bit more bearable, namely the kickstands, the anti-slip material, and the built-in cable management routing. The kickstands serve their purpose well and prop up the keyboard at an angle that other users may prefer, adding a good level of customizability to the system. They were quite sturdy and never collapsed or fell down while sliding the keyboard across the table, something the keyboards at my school could only dream of doing. That's another thing, sliding the keyboard. I'm sure that the anti-slip material was stronger and more effective when it was newer, but 20 years later, it's virtually nothing, even after cleaning it. I mean, it helps a little, but overall, it's not really doing anything and is not effective in stopping the keyboard from moving about. The last feature is kind of a unique one that I haven't actually seen on any other keyboard before. On the underside of the SK2800C is a set of cutouts that one could jam cables into as a form of cable management. I actually really like this feature since it's pretty unique and I found it interesting that this level of cable management would have been a mainstream feature two decades ago. But that's enough about the background of this keyboard. You came here to see how it holds up in 
2020, so I integrated it into my life for a day and recorded how it impacted the gaming and Windows usage experience. This part didn't go so well at first, and trying to type this script on the SK2800C didn't go over well for a couple of reasons. Primarily, it felt clunky and not smooth, even worse than the generic keyboards found at public schools. I think a contributing factor to this issue had to do with the height of the keys. They were a bit taller than what's considered average these days, and it took quite a bit of getting used to. Their general usage felt a lot slower, more cumbersome, and the heavier activation pressure felt a bit awkward. As I previously stated, there's a lack of documentation when it comes to this model of keyboard, so I don't know exactly what its activation pressure is, but I went around and compared it against every other keyboard I owned, and it was the heaviest. I realized that doesn't have a lot of credibility behind it, but trust me, these things took a bit of weight to activate. This really was the main obstacle to overcome, but I eventually got used to it. Another aspect of this keyboard that I like to cover deals with how loud its usage was, and going from Cherry MX switches to 20 year old rubber dome ones, the noise level actually changed a bit. The first one, which is on my Razer Hunts Middle E, is more clicky and has a higher pitch of it altogether. On the other hand, the switches from the SK2800C aren't quiet by any means, but they definitely have a bit more bass to them. Here's a little typing test I did for an example, starting with the Huntsman Elite. And here's the Compact SK2800C. So that's how they sound, unique in their own little ways. But as I said, I integrated Compact's keyboard into my daily life, and what's something I sometimes do? Play games such as Titanfall 2 or Rocket League. I chose these titles because they both have an emphasis on quick, precise movement, a way to put my skills to the test, but also to show that yes, this keyboard is still competent 20 years later. First, we'll start with some Rocket League. Oh, okay, I was about to say, like, if, if you play on Moss and Keyboard, I will beat you. Oh, I love getting beaten by Gia. Oh, nice. Well, now I have I'll to leave this all in because I just scored a fucking goal. <laughs> 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 Alright, I'll see you guys later. Alright, all right, wait, bye. wait, who is the other one? I forget his name. Okay, he's the other person? Time. <laughs> oh, it was, um, name redacted because it came like this. Get ready for some major CBT right now. Oh, okay, cool ball. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that's the last time I hit- that's the last time anyone hit the fucking ball. Send you here. Oh fuck. Patrick, I'm sorry. Patrick, come on. Oh no, oh. I'm so fucking incompetent. It's insane. <laughs> Oh, stolen! Uh, and your bit, too. Oh, fuck. Nice, Patrick. Yep. You gotta do the cooking, by the oh, Are you kidding me? They smacked him in their own fucking goal! Who would do that? An idiot, that's good. Oh my god! <laughs> it was a team effort, too. Okay, thanks for that. Now, here's some Titanfall. So there's your semi-annual Jindai Tech Reviews Kill Montage, and that just about finishes up my review for this keyboard. It's old, it's clunky, it's not worth its weight in wood, but it still holds up decently 20 years after launch. Well, by decent I mean that it still works. It was a little bit cumbersome to set up, and its usage felt awkward and slow, so if for some reason, by some one in a million chance, you still use this keyboard and are satisfied with it, then please, literally buy any other keyboard. Seriously, anything made after 2010 should be able to blow this out of the water. Alright, that's the end of the video. A few more things I want to mention though. First, we hit 300 subscribers. Yay, thank you. I'm pretty sure that that makes me legally famous now. Secondly, where have I been? Uh, schoolwork, and I plead the fifth on the rest because I'm an American and I can do that. Regardless, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because interactions with viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm and I guarantee that I'll respond to your comments. While you're at it, please subscribe because it helps a lot in video quality and production also positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and have a great day. Bye.